Quick story time, I went on a ski trip last weekend and the whole car ride up, I kept having this feeling that I forgot something, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. So, you know, I just wrote it off as everyday anxiety, overthinking, nothing new. Whatever. It wasn't until later when I was washing the blood off my hands. No, just kidding. It wasn't until I was getting ready for dinner that I realized I had forgotten my makeup brushes and sponge. So after, you know, wiping away my tears, your girl had to get crafty. Turns out it wasn't the end of the world and I figured out a way to still look decent applying my makeup with my hands. And I thought I would challenge myself again and try to do a full face with no tools. FFNT for short. No one says that, okay? Let's get started. So I already did my brows, if that's not obvious, because it's the same process I've been doing using these products. I probably shouldn't mention this to draw attention to it, but I have some breakouts around my lips. And if I had to choose the worst spot on your face to break out, it's far and beyond, above and beyond? far and away above and beyond, doesn't matter. It's your lips. Close second would be smack dab in the middle of your cheek cause it's like so obvious, but your lips, man, they're painful. They're hard to cover up. Cause like you can either overline your lips or try to conceal, but either way it's still obvious. And people sometimes read your lips and so they look at your mouth and it's like, eh. And they take twice as long to heal cause you're constantly like eating and moving your lips. And it's just like irritated all the time. Anyways, that was my rant on, these are so annoying and I feel like I've had them for an eternity. I'm actually gonna start with my eyes today because I want to do some glitter and I think there's gonna be quite a bit of fallout and so I want to be able to clean that up and it's easier to do on my bare face. Great. I just love a zoomed in shot of my face. It makes me feel really good. I have a little bit of uh, concealer on my eyelids that I just kind of like used the leftover of what I concealed my eyebrows with. So um, that is on my lids. I just want to be transparent about that. So to map out the shape, I'm using the Makeup by Mario Master Pigment Pro Eye Pencil in the Perfect Brown. Oh yeah, I remember that alliteration really irked me last time. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm using this to map out the shape for the eye I want. And then I'm gonna blend that out with the brush that comes with it. I know that's like a brush and not my fingies, but in this scenario where I forget my brushes slash sponges, I'd still have this, so... Yeah, I don't have to explain myself. That's just like, I like to follow rules and I think this is like bending the rules, but I don't think they're broken. If you ever struggle with applying eyeshadow, I highly suggest you start doing this too because it makes like a stencil by tracing the perimeter and then you just like try to stay in that area to maintain the shape of your eyeshadow. I know I can get kind of nervous when I'm applying eyeshadow, so this has just been like a helpful technique I've been able to stick to. So then I'm going to dip into the Tarte Tarte Tartlet Toasted Hate Palette and um, use this warm brown shade over top of where that uh, liner was put down. I feel like my hands are too sweaty to blend right now. Then for most of the lid, I'm going in with this pastel orangey color cashmere. Sorry, to explain, I want to use this Marc Jacobs blue color. And if I'm not mistaken, orange and blue are considered complementary colors. I did take art K through eight, so I'm pretty much an expert. <sighs> Just kidding. Obviously everyone took art class. I actually have zero credibility because for the longest time I thought Roy G. Biv was an actual person and that he invented the color wheel. I've since learned, but wouldn't that be the craziest coincidence? Anyways, what I'm getting at is that I wanna do kind of a bronzy eye because in my mind, bronze is in the orange family. So blue should look good with it, like pop next to it. I just realized the shade of this is actually purple rain, but this is blue, okay? This is blue. Now for the sparkles, sparkles! So for the center of my lid, I'm going to apply the shade Bronze from the ABH Soft Glam Palette. It's called Bronze, but to me, it looks gold. You know, gold metal, or I guess bronze metal for trying. <laughs> Cause it's still wrong. Hmm. 
Then I'm going back into the toasted palette. I'm using the shade Simmer. And then I'm just gonna dust that over where I put the gold color, the bronze. <laughs> just all over the lid, basically. Okay, now for the main event. I'm using the Marc Jacobs highliner in my waterline and also around the perimeter of my eye. Dang it, this isn't really as vibrant. I also can't really blend this out. I don't trust my pinky. I can try to like cut. I'm gonna slice my eye open. It's just hard because I have to take it right out of the bullet. You know what I mean? Why did I do this? Like I feel like the challenge was no brushes, not bold eye that's already out of my comfort zone plus no brushes. So I can't even try to fix if I mess anything up. Anyways, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, we need to continue and it's gonna be fine. Deep breaths, deep breaths. So to brighten up the inner corner, I was gonna use MAC All That Glitters, but now that I'm looking at the Soft Glam palette, I'm kind of thinking either Glistening or Fairy would look better. Also MAC, I have a bone to pick with you. Actually two bones. First, I know that you wanna sell products in China, but animal testing is bad. Second, when you name the shade of an eyeshadow after an iconic Smash Mouth song, it's a real burden because every time I use this shade, I get the song stuck in my head and it ruins basically my entire day. Can't blame me too much though because I did kind of the same thing to myself when I made Harry Styles my lock screen and then I constantly had a watermelon sugar stuck in my head. I'm gonna take some Shiseido Aura Dew in solar over the center of my lid to kind of amp it up a bit. Oh shit. I just went over the eyeliner though, buddy. Oh, it actually wasn't that bad. Okay, I freaked out. I'm such a drama queen. <laughs> so this isn't, this isn't looking as cool as I wanted it to, but maybe a bunch of mascara will do something. <laughs> so I'm using the Maybelline Lash Sensational. Sensational. What does that mean? I'm just gonna use a paper towel and some micellar water to clean up any fallout. It's funny, I hate to like gender stereotype, but I feel like if you ask girls and guys what they think fallout is, I would bet you money girls would say eyeshadow and guys would say video game. <laughs> So for my base, to even out my skin tone, I'm just doing like one layer of the MAC face and body. I like to apply this with my hands anyway, so nothing new here. But yeah, just a layer of this kind of evens up my skin before I need more coverage from a different foundation. And for a bit more coverage, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. This has become one of my faves because it glides over my texture well and it has kind of like a perfecting element to it. So it's, it's quite nice. Gotta thank my girl. Emrata for turning me on to this. I can't take all the credit. To conceal any areas, I'm just using the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Just on any spots that need a bit more coverage. And then same concealer, different shade for my under eyes. So I basically can't set my face with powder, right? I mean, I guess I'll try. Technically this comes with a little sponge, but I'm just gonna try to do my finger at first. This is an exclusive first look. Oh, it's not that bad. Uh, I mean, it's not awesome, but yeah, it's actually not that bad. I just wanna try to do a little bit of powder on my cheeks to like set that. Okay, I guess not. So lately I've been doing a combo on my cheeks. I like to do like a peachy color just on the apples. So for that, I'm using the Burt's Bees blush in Bare Peach. And then I like a deeper, more mauve tone on more of my cheekbone area. So for that, I'm using the Hourglass Ambient Light and Mood Exposure. Let's just try it. Oh yeah, okay. How do I get the right angle? <coughs> It's kind of, oh God, okay. Maybe more of my fingertips. Sorry, okay. Also, I'm a big fan of the How I Built This podcast with Guy Raz and Burt's Bees was featured on it. So the two founders were a woman and like Burt, like the fisherman guy who's on the packaging. Sorry, I guess beekeeper. That's the whole, I wanna say her name was, it was something really catchy. Wait. 
Roxanne. Oh my gosh. All she wanted to do is party all night and boy did she party, dude. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, from what I remember, they met at like a farmer's market or like artisan fair or something like that. And they like started the business because she would like use his wax or something. That sounded dirty, but like She'd use his beeswax to make candles and they started a business selling honey or whatever. Anyways, then they started a love affair and it like ended badly. And he was like quoted saying he like never wanted to see her again or like speak to her again. And they ended up having some kind of phone call when he was on his deathbed. But it was like, oh my God, the tea was piping hot, dude. And here I thought Brit Spies was like this cute little innocent indie company. Turns out the drama, the scandal, I was living for it, dude. Gosh, I feel like I don't even need blush anymore. I'm already blushing from their steamy love affair. But yeah, sorry, back to the blush. This kind of palm thing worked a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of working. It's kind of not though. Maybe my thumb, ooh, my thumb will be better. Right? Oof, I'm worried about the pigment. This looks so strange. It's not really as much as I want. And I'm using the hourglass. Uh, it's just patchy, oh God. Okay, we'll fix it, we'll fix it, it's all good. It's just like emphasizing the scars I have because it's taking away some of, the, some of the coverage. Well, you know what? We'll just limit it to like a little bit of blush. I've looked better. Okay, now on to some bronzer, Too Faced. As I said, I'm trying to finish this, so. Okay, this is doing a whole lot of nothing. You know what? I'm using cream bronzer. Friggin' sue me. You know who did try to sue? Roxanne. I'm not over it, dude, I'm not over it. <laughs> oh my God, and it's like, she was like really attracted to like Bert, and you've like seen Bert. She actually was like way cute. She wanted like him on all the packaging because she didn't like how the beauty industry like portrayed females. And so she wanted to put like a um, uncommon figure. I don't know, I, it was actually very cute. I highly recommend the podcast. But anyways, okay, let's go in with some milk baked matte bronzer. Sorry, it's matte bronzer in baked. I don't know why I started with my nose. That was a little bit weird. And some of my middle finger and flipping you guys off, sorry. Uh, let's try the lips. <laughs> Ugh, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't. I'm gonna try to clean up. Okay, it's not that bad. I think I need a little bit of something on the lower lash line, so I'm going to use Burnish by Nude Sticks. And blend that out with my finger a little bit. Okay, I think that's it. We survived, dude! I kind of thought that would be a lot worse, if I'm honest. I mean, the blush and bronzer doesn't look awesome, but better than my bare face, if you know what I'm saying. Just kidding, I wanted to do my lips. I'm gonna outline with Marc Jacobs Nudist really quick. And then I'm using another Marc Jacobs. This is a Marc Jacobs heavy tutorial. J'adore from Marc Jacobs. For my little gratitude bit today, I hate to do another physical feature, but I've had two experiences recently that made me kind of think about it. So today I'm grateful for my height. I am 5'11", which by the national average is considered pretty tall. Good for sports, bad for jeans and insecure boys. <laughs> But I was at the grocery store yesterday and this cute little old lady kindly asked if I could grab a couple things she needed from the top shelf, which if you're tall is not an uncommon occurrence. People ask for your help. And the second one, I also thought saw an empty box in the recycling room for a step stool. I've never had to own a step stool because I rarely can't reach some for something that's high up. And like throughout my life, I've kind of grappled with being like super confident about my height. But I I really should be happy about it because there are a lot of perks and I need to remind myself of that. So that's my gratitude bit for today. Thank you so much for powering through this train wreck with me. Please subscribe, definitely do that, and I'll see you later.